Monday, the 10th of June, should by now be a date in your diary. Why? Well, because that's the date of this year's keynote speech at WWDC. And during that speech, we are going to hear Apple talking for the first time about a slew, a raft of new features coming to iOS 18 and to iPhone 16. In this video, we're going to look at how Apple intend to play the AI game. Why have they come late to the party? How's it going to look? How's it going to feel? And a little bit later on in the video, we'll talk about the future of AI on your iPhone. Now, Apple historically, as you know, is a company that likes to keep its cards very close to its chest. We rely too heavily on rumors. But for some reason, they've been very verbose and very open about the fact that AI is coming to iPhone later this year. Tim Cook has gone on record a few times this year. Recently, he said that we're going to be breaking new ground on generative AI and went on to say that we believe it will unlock transformative opportunities for our users. And towards the end of the Q1 earnings call a few weeks ago, and I wouldn't suggest you listen to it, it is as dull as dishwater, but I sat through it for you. And during that speech and that phone call, he had this to say when asked directly about the future of Gen AI on iPhones. In terms of uh, generative AI, which I, I would guess is your, your focus, we have a lot of work going on internally, as I've alluded to before. Our um, MO, if you will, has always been to, to do work and then talk about work and not to get out in front of ourselves. And so we're going to hold that uh, to this as well. Uh, but we, we've got some uh, things that we're incredibly excited about uh, that we'll be talking about later this year. So we know that it's coming. It's not a rumor. We just heard it from the horse's mouth. We know AI is coming to iPhone. So the question is now, how's it going to look? How's it going to feel? How are Apple going to implement AI onto an iPhone? Now, I've got a little bit of experience about it because last year, for a time, I used this, the Google Pixel 8 Pro. So I've got a kind of idea about AI on phones. I liked it, I liked some of what Android had to offer, but not enough to stay with Android. I came back to Apple, I came back to my iPhone. Why? Because it suits me. I like the way it looks, I like the familiarity, I like what it offers me, it fits in with my Apple ecosystem, of course. And what I don't want is my iPhone to suddenly feel like an Android just to facilitate some AI. We know that there's some major, major overhauls coming to iOS 18 later this year, possibly the biggest changes we've seen it in its history, not only to the UI, but to the way that it's going to work around with AI. There's new features coming, there's new message features, Maps and Syria getting updates, there's support for RCS, and of course, these massive AI improvements as well. And if you need more convincing that we know something big is coming, the A18 chip that's going to be in the iPhone 16 Pro phones, that's got a new neural engine with significantly more cores. So everything suggests we are getting something big a little bit later this year. Now, in true Apple fashion, possibly some of the high-end AI features will be locked down, software locked to just iPhone 16 or possibly even just the iPhone 16 Pro phones. But I mentioned they've come late to the party, which I thought meant that Apple were clearly developing their own LLM. They were going to really impress us coming with something major, but we now know that they haven't. They're going to basically be buying an off-the-shelf LLM, and at this stage it looks like they're going to turn to Google and Gemini Nano. So no matter what developments they've made, and they're spending $1 billion a year trying to play catch-up with Google and OpenAI, however far they've got with it, they don't feel confident enough with what they've developed to bring it to market just yet. And we'll be talking about how Gemini Nano might look and feel on an iPhone next. But first of all, I just wanted to say thank you. It was another great week for the channel. We are gaining subs, we're gaining momentum, and the best thing of all is you get involved and you take time to comment. I've always said, if you take time to comment, I will reply, and I always do, whether it's on a short or whether it's on a full-length video here. So thank you so much for getting involved. It means the world to me. We smashed through 5,000 subs. Clearly, 10,000 is my next goal. I'd love to get that done by the end of the summer, and with your help, it might even happen sooner. So don't forget all those basics that you always hear being talked about by us creators, like, sub, share, make a massive, massive difference. So if this is the first time you've seen one of my videos, it's great to have you along, and if you're enjoying it, liking, subbing, sharing really does help. So hopefully you're enjoying it and we'll see you back here soon. Right, let's go back to talking about AI on the iPhone and how really it works. Now we know that AI works best if it's out there gaining data, learning, 
It needs data scraping. Sure, you can have local LLMs, but that's not really how AI develops quickest. It's not what it had in mind when it first began to become the dominant force that it is. But that brings a question to my mind. How is Apple going to square that circle? They're all about privacy, right? So does that mean that the AI features are purely going to be on device? They're all going to be local LLMs? Or is it going to be a case of a mixture, some via the cloud and some on device? And if that's the case, who decides what's personal and sensitive data? Who decides what stays on device? And who decides what can be done on the cloud? Who's the judge and jury there? Somebody's got to make that decision, and I'm not sure at this point who it would be. Clearly, the S voice assistant, I can't say it because I've got way too many things around me that will trip off, needs to be improved. It needs ground up improvements. Now, apparently, Apple have said internally they intend to make it the ultimate voice assistant, and boy, it needs it. What it needs to be is conversation based. You need to be able to talk to it, you need to be able to have a two way conversation with it. And if we assume that we're going to get that, and if we assume that we know we're getting AI, then you begin to look at what apps would benefit most from AI on an iPhone. A few that come to mind for me, music. For instance, say you've got a particular version of a song, you should be able to ask your voice assistant to go and find that particular version of that song in your library. And even better, put it into a playlist or delete a track from a playlist, create a playlist. That should all be possible with a good voice assistant. Shortcuts, I, I want to use them, but I never have. I'm too thick to understand how to use the shortcuts. I put my hands up. If you can help me, brilliant. But surely with AI, it should be super, super simple, shouldn't it? It really should be. If you want to turn the lights on in a room, say you've got a smart house, surely AI would work perfectly with that. And clearly the app that's absolutely waiting to have AI come to it is the Photos app. As good as the Photos app is on iPhone, with AI, it could be even better. Now, as I say, I did play around with the Pixel 8 Pro last year, and there were a couple of features on there that I really did like. For instance, Magic Eraser. That would fit fantastically onto an iPhone. I can see that being really useful for an iOS user, but not so much best take on Magic Editor, because there you're getting into that murky water of creating an image that never actually existed. And that doesn't feel that doesn't feel very Apple. Android, their speech to text is amazing. I could probably dictate a whole blog to it. It's that quick and that accurate. And if you want to read my blogs about Apple gear, you can find them over on Medium. Also, Audio Eraser, that is amazing. Coming from an audio background, the way it cleans up audio is stunning. And I would quite like to see that coming to iPhone. So when they're taking videos out on a windy day, it cleans everything up. And Circle to Search, although that's not really for me, I can see that a lot of iOS users would really, really like it. So now as we get towards the back end of this video, I've just got a few questions I want to run past you. First of all, who pays who? Do Apple pay Google because they want the best LLM? Or does Google pay Apple because they want their LLM to be on billions of iPhones and get as much data back as possible? Or have they just come to some neat little arrangement? Do either company mention either company? We've got Google's I.O. coming up in May and, of course, WWDC in June. Do Google come on stage and say, we are now powering iPhone? Do Apple come on stage and say, we've got Nano powering our AI features? Or do they just say something bland like, we've partnered with industry-leading giants? You tell me. I really don't know which way it's going to be. And also, how long will Apple want to be reliant on Google for supplying their LLM? Apple like to be in control. If you think back to 2012, I think it was, when Apple eventually launched their own Maps app, that came about because of a big falling out between Google and Apple. If you remember back at the time, they fell out because Google refused to give Apple the rights to the voice-directed turn-by-turn navigation feature. Apple will not want to find themselves in that position ever again. And finally, will we hear on stage for the first time Apple actually saying AI for the first time? Will they drop machine learning? Will they talk about Gen AI? Will they talk about AI openly? The fact is, this is only the start of the story. Much like when Vision Pro was launched back at the beginning of this year, it's just the start. If Apple have decided that they want AI on their phones and they've got the AI bit between their teeth, this is going to move at a hell of a pace. Of that, you can be certain. 
Where it goes from here, I don't know, but it's an exciting journey that we're about to embark on. And I'd love to know from you, what features would you love to see on iPhone 16 and iOS 18? What AI features would you love to be in your Apple ecosystem? Thank you ever so much for watching this video. It's really intriguing what we're about to see. Get involved, don't forget, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll be back with another video next week. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you very, very soon.